So a question that we get a ton around this time of the year is what should I get for the guitar player in my life, whether it be a spouse or a friend or a child or a cousin or whomever. Um, and we got a lot of really good stuff in right now that would be a great idea. I want to show you guys what I would love to get as a guitar player and, uh, you know, just give you some recommendations. Let's check it out. How's it going, y'all? This is Cooper Greenberg at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We got a lot of good holiday gift guide stuff coming out. Um, you know, like and comment on our videos. We love to hear from you guys. And if you're interested, become a Patreon insider because we love sharing extra sneak peek stuff with you guys. So, like I said, we're talking about gifts and things that are pretty accessible, some more than others but anything that's on this table right now would make a guitar player very happy this holiday season. Um, I'm gonna jump right in with something that I personally own, something that I love, that I think every guitar player should probably have, which is the Mustang Micro that Fender put out this year. I think this is probably one of the smartest things that they could have done. Um, there's been other options like this before, certain things that you can plug into the guitar, plug some headphones in. But I'm not sure if there's anything this extensive. Basically what you're working with here is a tiny little amp that you can plug into the input jack on your electric or acoustic guitar if you have electronics in the acoustic. Um, and then plug some headphones into it. It's also got Bluetooth capabilities. So you can plug your headphones in, play a song, play along with the song from your phone. Um, and it's got a bunch of different preset amps, bunch of effects and um, you know, it's you can plug it into a USB, get it into your computer as well. The, the thing that I actually was talking to a guy about the other day is he asked about if it would work on an acoustic guitar or say an Acoustasonic or a T5, something like that. Um, it's got so many different things that it really doesn't matter what you're plugging into it because you have so many options. There's an acoustic, like really clean studio preamp option as well as different emulations of classic Fender amps and non-Fender amps and all kinds of delays, echoes, chorus, flange, overdrives. I mean, there's so much to play with in here and it's just a great practice tool. So at the price point that it is, I want to say it's right around $100, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Either way, um, you might just wanna buy one for yourself. If somebody that you know is a guitarist that doesn't have one of these, I can guarantee even if they have the nicest amp in the world and a giant pedal collection, they're gonna have some fun with this because everyone wants to play late at night sometime and not wake up all their neighbors. So this is a really fantastic option. Um, Mustang Micro, we also have a full demo with a bunch of sounds. If you wanna check that out, I will link it above because um, it's just a really cool little practice amp tool and great songwriting tool. Uh, I can't say enough good about it, but let's say somebody's got a Mustang Micro and they've got an amp, but they have no pedals. Um, this might be somebody that's just getting started or they've focused on clean tones, whatever it may be. Pedals are always a really good option. Um, also around this time of the year, when people come into the store, pedals are probably the first thing that people gravitate towards because they're fun to look at, they're colory, the, uh, the boxes are cool, they got cool names, uh, but some pedals get really, really expensive. And so it's nice to see a couple options that are pretty affordable, either for an entry level player that just wants to start a collection um, or somebody, you know, you need to get someone their first pedal. The main uh, recommendation that I would have is a DS1 and for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is one of the most used and legendary pedals of all time. But the second reason is that Boss, who makes this pedal, um, have kept the price at a very competitive rate. and just like every other legacy pedal company, you know, you can always say this is the classic, this is the first one, um, add some extra logo on it that might say Waza Craft or something and sell it for three or four times its price. They keep this one right here really accessible, um, definitely under $100, prices change all the time, you can check out on the website, all that, but this is probably the most entry level pedal from Boss that you can get. Um, that's going to have such a classic effect on it. Distortion, the DS1. Um, there's some other options as well. I love the SD1, uh, Super Overdrive. And also, uh, it's worth talking about the MXR pedals from Dunlop. Um, I believe we got the Chorus, the Phase 90, 
and the blue box here, but we've also got the carbon copy, which is something that I got on my board. It's an analog delay. And we have a Dyna comp as well if you need a compressor on the board. These are um, also very classic pedals that a lot of great players have used. They're built like little tanks. They're kind of heavy and they feel nice in the hand. Uh, really hardcore metal. And if you're into hardcore metal, uh, just get some effects on the board. This blue box is a fuzz and it's one of the coolest kind of one trick pony pedals that I can think of. Um, really simple controls on these so somebody doesn't need to have an electrical engineering degree like our friend Sarush out there um, to really know how to operate them. You can throw them onto the board. Anything you do with the knobs is going to sound good but it's a nice way to kind of explore really classic effects like chorus, phase, um, fuzz and then compression and delay from those other two that I mentioned. Um, they're just really great pedals so I would recommend if you're into getting pedals for a friend of yours or for you uh, but you don't know too much about it check out Boss and MXR because they make them really easy to understand and you know Strymon and UA and some of those more high-end kind of almost boutique-y brands um, are really great too and we've done a lot of videos on those but they're kind of next step pedals once you know what you're doing they have a lot more capabilities but these are a really nice place to get started um, the next thing I want to talk about is something that we recently restocked in because we're all fans of orange here and we've had orange amps for a long time and then we couldn't get them for quite a bit but we finally have these back in stock which have been uh, really popular and they're really cool but I think a lot of people don't know how much they can do. Um, this is the Dark Terror and the Micro Terror. These are both 20 watt tube heads that you can run into any cabinet you have. Um, so you, know, you might have kind of a, a practice amp or the person that you're buying a gift for might have a small solid state practice amp which is going to do everything you need it to do. Um, it's going to be something that's great for exactly what it is, practicing. Um, but these are small enough and they have a kind of, not included, but recommended small cabinet um, that you can buy with them that we also have in stock. But these will drive an amp cabinet much, much larger than the one that it's kind of paired with. Um, they're 20 watts. We've talked about small tube amplifiers in here before with 5 watt and 15 watt tube amps from Fender. Um, a 15 watt tube amp is going to get loud enough on its own. 20 watts, it can blow the roof off the place. And so if you have an awesome vintage cabinet, maybe something with multiple speakers in it, um, this is going to have plenty of power to, you know, really push that thing. Get great tube tone if you don't know. You know, I'm kind of talking to people that might not be super uh, well versed in guitar kind of lingo. Um, I'm talking about solid state and tube amps. Tube amps are powered in a very different way from solid state amps and it's something that's very traditional for high-end guitar amps. The tone is going to be just a fuller, clearer, bell-like tone that I think all guitar nerds really love to debate about. But an orange amp is already kind of a, a very beloved brand and product. So it's cool to have something at a price point that's really accessible for anyone. Um, that can really take you a lot further than just a small practice amp for your home. So the Dark Terror and the Micro Terror, they are white and black and they're not the exact same thing. They're going to sound a little different, I guess. Who's to say? But if you like white, get the white one if you like black. And if you have, you know, a black or white cab, you can mix and match. You can do whatever you want. And these will work on cabinets that aren't just orange cabinets. So. They're really cool little tools to have, especially for smaller gigs, as well as practicing recording. You can run these direct into a board, do something cool. Um, but yeah, they're a really cool option. And they uh, also, just like I was talking about with the MXR and the Boss pedals, they're built really nicely. They're very durable. Um, you know, you don't want to throw this across the room because it's got a glass tube inside. And so you want to take care of it. But it's not a toy, even though it kind of looks like a little toy. It is a, uh, it's a very professional grade, really cool amplifier. Um, so definitely worth checking out. If we're talking about brand specific things, um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Every single brand that's out there has, you know, straps and tuners and swag that you can get if you have a, 
you know, a friend or a family member that's a huge fan of that brand or a collector. Um, I don't think anybody does it as well as Taylor. Um, they make it a whole experience that you can really buy into. When you get a Taylor guitar, you can get all kinds of Taylor branded accessories and, and really fun stuff to add into the collection. So I want to talk a little bit about Taylorware because that's kind of their, their sub brand of cool Taylor branded things. Um, we have probably the highest concentration of family members that come in and say, hey, my mom or my dad or my sister, they play Taylors, what can I get for them? And so, um, you know, Taylor fans are probably some of the most rabid diehard guitar fans. Um, we have a little bit of everything to show you. And I just want to show you some stuff that I like. Um, the Taylor picks are really nice, like high quality picks. So that's an easy one. You can, you know, get somebody a pick to match their guitar and they're just really nice feeling picks. Um, they also make slides, which are cool because they're made out of ebony. If you don't know about the Krella Cam ebony uh, going on in Cameroon, Taylor does everything for sustainability. Um, and so they always use the ebony to its you know, fullest potential. And that's why a lot of times you see Taylor guitars with like striped, almost figured ebony on the fretboards and the bridges, because in the past when ebony would be either dyed or rejected, if it had any extra colors in it that weren't jet black, um, they have kind of totally switched that around to where now fans of Taylor want ebony that's got some extra coloring and something unique. Um, and so you can buy a Krellicam ebony slide from them, which is going to sound totally different than a glass or a brass, um, any kind of metal slide. It's got a whole tonality of its own, and it's very warm sounding, as you can imagine, with a piece of wood sliding across the steel strings instead of a piece of metal or piece of glass. But I think it's a really nice complement to the Taylor sound, which is already a very bright and clear, chimey tone. Um, something like this might tame it a little bit and also just kind of have a nice warm feel. So that's very cool. Um, of course, you got capos. They make them. This is for kind of a thicker nut width for a 12 string or a nylon. But you can get a six string capo from them as well that perfectly conforms to a Taylor neck. So a lot of times with capos, a problem that guitarists might have is that it's kind of a one size fits all and it's never going to fit a radius or neck carve perfectly. So you know, these brands do certain padding to kind of fit to whatever guitar it's going to be. But this is made specifically for a Taylor guitar. So it's a nice thing to have for any Taylor collector. Um, also, you know, you can go for the Essentials Pack, which has polish and picks and a strap and a cleaning cloth. That's always something good for any guitar player. And if it's not from Taylor, we have Gibson ones. We have onstage um, brands. So, you know, you can find a nice maintenance kit, which is a great gift for anybody because if there's one thing that guitarists don't do enough is give their guitars a little TLC. Uh, but if you're a Taylor fan, it's a great way to go. And uh, something else that I think is cool that we've been sold out of forever that we finally got some more of is a wallet. And it's taken it into a whole new level of fandom. But they're super nice. They make these leather wallets. The first shipment that we got in, um, we got four and four employees bought them all up, which should not have been allowed, but we finally got some more in. They're really nice. And the last thing that I want to talk about from Taylor is um, their, their strap offerings are really nice. This is one that I picked out just as an example, kind of a Stevie Ray Vaughan-esque, you know, belt type looking thing. But what they do is really cool is they make different straps that match certain guitars. So you can buy them by series. Um, this is actually the Grand Pacific strap. So if you got yourself a 317, a 517, a 717, um, you can get the Grand Pacific strap, which you'll notice if you have one of those guitars already, um, this has the kind of Western tooled leather of the case that comes with those Grand Pacific guitars. So you can check them out on the website. If you know what guitar you're looking for, you can just type in the series, which will be the first number. So if you got a 517, um, you know, you're going to go for the Grand Pacific because that's a Grand Pacific body style. Say you got a 414 and you can type in the 400 series, find the strap that goes with it and really kind of ma match your guitars to the gear that's made for it, which is something that's pretty cool that Taylor does. Um, so definitely check out Taylorware 
for anybody that loves Taylor guitars um, as much or more than Chris McKee does. Um, but shifting gears for, you know, non-brand specific, um, it's really hard to go wrong with strings. So um, what you can do, is, and something that I advise for any of this, is kind of try and take note of what the guitar player you're buying for um, might kind of already have some of, because you're always going to need more strings, so just kind of a backstock of strings is a really nice thing. But I brought some that I think are really nice options if you don't know that anybody would be happy with. Um, first off, we got the Diodario XS acoustic strings. We did a demo on these against Elixirs, which I've also got some. Um, these are both coated strings, so they're going to last a little bit longer. They're going to feel a little bit nicer. Um, and they're kind of in the spectrum of strings. These are a little bit nicer strings. So if you have somebody that always buys the most entry-level cheapest strings, you want to treat them to a bit of luxury, um, some coated strings would be really nice. I think that Martin also makes some coated strings. Um, you know, we carry all these different brands of strings, and within the brands, there's always kind of a good, better, best. Um, something that's cool, if you already know about elixirs, uh, polywebs have been really, really hard to find for at least the last year. So we finally got a restock of polywebs. Taylors come with nano webs, uh, but some people have fallen in love with the polys, so we finally got those back in stock. A couple other things is, uh, you know, a lot of people might have flown under the radar that Gibson really upped their string game and has a few different lines. So if you got a player that plays Les Paul, an SG, you know, Hummingbird, Gibson Electric, or Acoustic, um, they make strings for it and, you know, for specific gauges. The uh, Les Paul Collection is their premium series, so these are really nice strings. But Electrics, you have kind of bright wire, really modern sound, and then they have the vintage reissue. So they, uh, you know, they give you options. They give you bright, new, um, kind of flashy, probably paired best with the Gibson Modern uh, versus the Gibson Original Vintage Reissue. Um, so those are nice. And then I never want to miss an opportunity to promote my favorite strings personally. That also I don't think a lot of people really give all the, uh, you know, kind of attention that they deserve. By the way, if you want to know kind of a rundown of all kinds of strings and what they sound like, Chris McKee made a painstakingly long string comparison for acoustic guitars that I will link above if you want to learn all about them. But my favorite of those is the Martin Retros. These are made with Monel. These are LJ's choice, Mr. Lawrence Juber. Um, but all the Retros have a very specific tone to them. Some might not like them if you're into Elixirs or XS strings. They're not coated. These are made with Monel and very old school sounding, very warm. I love them. So uh, find the right string for the sound that the guitar player goes for. And if they got a brand, if they're playing a Gibson Les Paul, but they're throwing, you know, kind of entry level strings on there, maybe some slinkies, treat them to a little uh, Les Paul premium string. They're going to feel the difference. And you might, you know, with any of these, you might uncover sort of an endless well. If they're into pedals, you can start helping them collect pedals. If they're into strings, feed their string habit. It's something that's never going to go, um, you know, un unacknowledged. But the last thing that I want to talk about, which these are all so, sort of, you know, in a range between strings being uh, easy, easy to pick up, pretty inexpensive to start collecting and, and adding to the gift, the stocking stuffers. And then as you move up, you know, some of these are a little more expensive. This is probably something that is going to be a little more special, a little more rare, um, you know, for a very close person. But if you've got a guitar player in your life, that needs a push to start recording and getting into maybe songwriting or just, you know, expanding their hobby. Um, some recording gear is a really fantastic choice. And I brought a few things up here that I like, um, that I think anybody would be very happy with. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the Focusrite Scarlet. Um, these are probably online, like, you know, in terms of quantity, the highest you know, number product that we sell. I mean, we crank through these and it's because they're really high quality entry level interfaces. 
for right around $100, and they grow from there. This specific one is the Solo, so you have one mic input and one uh, you know, quarter inch input, but they come with trials of software, and you, know, you might already have GarageBand or Logic or something on your computer, or this person may have that already. This makes it super easy to just plug it in, it's a USB interface, plug your guitar in and start rolling, start making music, and that can uncover a whole new world of possibilities. Um, so Focusrite Scarlet, whether you want to get something like this, the Solo, you want to get some more inputs, we have it all. So kind of think about what they're working with. If they got a band, they might want to try to record a full band session or a few different instruments at one time. You can grow the inputs and they're still very affordable. Um, but if you want to take the next step, maybe they already have an interface that they've been working on for a really long time and you want to get into kind of next level stuff. We've been talking about these a lot on both the guitar and the Pro Audio channels here. Um, Universal Audio makes kind of the highest quality, I, I want to say entry level, but that's not the right word, um, kind of plug and play desktop interfaces that you can get. This is the Apollo Solo, so again, sort of the lowest number of inputs that you can get. But what you're going to get on this one versus this one is a lot better conversion, better preamps, um, the software, and the plugins that are included. It's just a kicked up, more professional version, but it's still, when you look at professional grade recording gear, um, I think it's a steal for what you're getting. And if you're interested, you can check out the video that we kind of ran down all of the Apollo line. I personally just bought one myself and uh, I could not be happier with it. It's a really, really high quality interface. And then uh, kind of the last thing, say you're already working with stuff, you're already recording, um, you can't beat a really nice microphone, um, whether it be a dynamic or condenser microphone. I chose the Warm 47 Junior, you know, the FET uh, condenser mic. We use them for acoustic demos here. I've used them for vocals. I've used them for all kinds of instruments when I'm recording. It's a reproduction of a classic mic that if you were to buy the real thing, it would be, you know, incredibly expensive on a resale market. But Warm Audio is right down the street from us in Austin, Texas. They're making really cool clones that are really high quality, just kind of reproductions of classic recording gear, whether it be outboard gear or microphones. They started making pedals as well. But um, think about what kind of stuff they're that this person might be recording. If they're using acoustic guitars, if they're recording vocals, it's really hard to beat um, You know, a condenser mic that's going to be high quality. It's going to pick up better sound. For dynamic mics, which you know we can talk about the differences or you can look it up for yourself, but um, dynamic mics are going to be a completely different beast. Maybe check out the Shure SM7B or even you know a little bit lower key. Shure makes some great microphones, you know, uh, a 58 Beta, that's a great option. Um, if they've already got recording gear and they just might need an upgrade, please give us a call. We can make you a recommendation um, with, with any of this stuff. I think it's if you're watching this video because you're curious to see what this person might like, you're already on a very nice and thoughtful path, and we'd love to help you find kind of the perfect thing. So if you're into pedals, give us a call. We can recommend the exact one that they might like based on music they like. Um, and that goes for any of this stuff. And, and recording gear, it gets pretty complicated once you start looking into it. And we have people here that can make recommendations. Even strings, you know, we love talking about this stuff and we love getting the right gear into the right player's hands. So I hope some of this was helpful. And, it, you know, if you need the next step, you can email us, you can call us. We got forms on our website that you can kind of tell us exactly what you need and get somebody to give you a call back. Um, but, you know, we just really want to help, you know, the right stuff get to the right people's hands. And I appreciate y'all watching me ramble about cool gear for this long. Either way, whatever you get for this person, they're going to enjoy it. And if you're not looking for a gift for somebody else, but you're looking for yourself, treat yourself. We got a lot of cool things from, you know, $10 to however high you want to go. Whatever your budget is, there's some really cool stuff this year that's new products and some classics that are just worth being on your board. So find more info on all this stuff on alamomusic.com. Like I said, please subscribe, comment, let us know what you think below. If you got other ideas, maybe some people aren't satisfied with what I got, feel free to share your ideas below, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.